I have some very fond memories growing up of family gatherings and big feasts. My mother's side of the family in particular was quite lively, had some great parties and some wonderful dinners. And as was typical, there was far more food than anyone could possibly consume at one of those gatherings. But it didn't go to waste. We had lots of leftovers afterwards. And I think I still hear my aunt telling my father, who was built like a linebacker and had an appetite to match, Henry, have some more. The abundance of a, a great feast in these family times speaks to us of the superabundance of God's goodness to us. God doesn't ration or spare us when it comes to pouring out his blessings. He does so in superabundance more than we can really take in. And so, in our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the prophet foretells this wonderful feast that the Lord will give us of rich foods and choice wines. And in our gospel reading today, the Lord speaks to us of a banquet. And of course, both Isaiah and our Lord are, are speaking of this heavenly banquet to which we are invited, where the Lord longs to pour upon us blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing of his goodness. And the celebration of Holy Mass is nothing but a participation in this heavenly worship, in this heavenly banquet, where the Lord feeds us with the precious gift of the Eucharist. And in receiving the body, the blood of our Lord, he feeds us with rich food, the food of himself and pours upon us blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing, more than we can take in. For when we participate in Holy Mass, when we come here in person, it's not like watching television. We are gathered as God's people around the throne of God in heaven, worshiping him, offering him our life, offering him our love in return for the very precious gift that the Lord gives us. When we come here, the very sacrifice of Christ on Calvary is made present. And when we come here and offer our lives back to the Lord, we are joining in that one sacrifice of our Lord in offering Christ to the Father. And this just can't simply be done by television. What a great privilege it is. And we might ask ourselves, how important is it for us to come to Mass? And to help us understand the importance, let us look at an episode in the history of our early church. 
It's the year 304 AD. The Christians are being persecuted under the reign of the Emperor Diocletian. And a group of the Lord's people who had gathered for the celebration of Mass in someone's home in northern Africa are arrested. And fortunately for, not, for us, we, we still have the records of the trial that took place of these Christians. And when the owner of the house was questioned why he didn't prevent this from happening in his home, he said, I could not prevent it because without the Lord's day, we cannot live. I could not prevent it because without the Lord's day, we cannot live. Is the Mass this important to us? This group of people risked their lives to do what we are doing here today. Do we acknowledge that the celebration of Mass is the source and summit of our life? And can we say that without the Lord's day, we cannot live? Dear friends in Christ, the Lord invites us to his banquet. Let us not be like those in the gospel reading who refuse to answer the invitation. Let us come. The Mass is de indeed is so important that it was only under very grave, only grave and rare exceptions did I have to publicly suspend Mass at the beginning of the pandemic. We just needed some time to understand what kind of safety provisions we had to put in place. And no doubt this group of Christians who were arrested in Northern Africa also took safety precautions during the time of persecution. They could not celebrate Mass openly. They had to do so under cover. They took safety precautions. But yet they came. They took the precautions. And they came. And so, Similarly, now we have safety precautions in place, and we should not be foolhardy. We should keep observing them, and no doubt we will be observing them for some time. And we all know the drill by now. Stay six feet apart, wear a face mask, wash your hands, keep everything clean and sanitized, and so forth. So we shouldn't be foolhardy. We need to keep these precautions up, these safety measures. But at the same time, let us not live in fear. Let us not live in fear. The Mass is so important. Answer the Lord's invitation. Observe the safety precautions like early Christians did. And come. So I'd like to speak to anyone who might be viewing this via live stream or later on YouTube when the video is up. 
If you don't have any serious health concerns, you know, if you don't have any serious health concerns and if you've just fallen out of the practice of going to Mass or if you're maybe afraid to come back, we have good safety measures in place. Let us observe them. Answer the Lord's invitation. Come back. The Mass is so important. And I speak to all of you gathered here. If you know anyone who is just afraid to come back or has maybe fallen out of the practice of doing so and is not at serious risk, just like the Master sent out servants to invite people back to the feast, I'm sending you out to invite them to come. The Mass is so important to us. The Lord wishes to fill us with blessings so abundant by coming here more than we can imagine or possibly even understand. How important is it to us to answer the Lord's invitation to come to the feast? How important is it to us to come to Mass? Can we say with the owner of that home, when he was questioned why he did not prevent the Mass from being celebrated in his house, can we say with him, I could not prevent it? Because without the Lord's day, we cannot live.